Hello, and thank you for joining us in, for this edition of the One Young World Together Apart series. My name is Fahana Muna, and I'm a proud One Young World Ambassador from Bangladesh, reporting to you in the middle of the night from Melbourne, Australia. I had the utter privilege of speaking at the One Young World Summit in 2019 in London. I am a social media um, influencer and I use all of my platforms to have conversations about mental health and the stigma around it and in particular shine the light on female empowerment issues. Joining us today is the renowned Colombian ballet dancer Fernando Montano. He has been a One Young World counselor since 2017 and recently performed at the London 2019 Summit's opening ceremony at Royal Albert Hall. He has an incredible story, having been born in difficult circumstances in Colombia and making it as a soloist at the Royal Ballet, one of the world's most prestigious companies in the world. Thank you so much, Fernando, for joining. How are you and how are you doing in this new world that we're suddenly finding ourselves in? Oh, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, I'm very, very good. Um, um, I'm glad that also my family and I hope you and everyone else families as well is well. And, um, and I'm just delighted. Um, at the moment, I'm here in Los Angeles. Um, and as you said, um, trying to cope with uh, this issue that the whole world is dealing with. Um, and, and I think, well, uh, as an artist, I have to keep, you know, training my instrument, which is my body, as a ballet dancer, of course, and, um, and just trying to, to keep up my spirit, because I think it's very important in those days to keep smiling, even though what we see and what we hear is, is not as... Um, beautiful and, and, and wonderful. That's great to hear, Fernando. I think that that just reminds me that we have a lot to be grateful for still. You know, everywhere people are coping in different ways. And as I see myself and even you safe in our own homes and our families are safe, um, I'm reminded what a privilege it is to stay at home. I'm from Bangladesh and many people don't have the privilege of staying at home to earn a livelihood. So it's great to see your positive attitude. Exactly. Like, I, I, I heard here in LA, like some people that, you know, they live in a small um, or sharing the apartment with three, four people and they may just have a room. So, so I know I can imagine how hard it is, especially for those that may don't have like a, an outside space and um, staying most of the time inside the house. Absolutely. Um, so Fernando, thank you so much for being here today. I'd like to kick off by asking the first question, which comes from Lily. She's in Malaysia. Um, her question is, for those who don't know, what has the impact of COVID-19 been on the arts and entertainment industry? Well, it's been a, a big, big impact, of course, because, you know, most of the theaters are shut. Um, also, you know, the movie industry as well is completely collapsing as well because people are losing their jobs. Of course, like in my case, for example, as a ballet dancer of the Royal Ballet, like all the dancers are at home. We have to keep training ourselves and the conditions are not the most um, appealing. Um, so then also musicians, um, you know, it's a tough, a very, very tough for, a very tough moment for everyone as, you know, the artist is, I believe, is the people's, or try to lift up the people, you know, spirit. Um, so then now we may see the arts not as a commodity, but maybe as a, as a necessity. You know, listen, even maybe just to play a song or listen to a concert or see a play or a movie, all those things are not just a pleasure. Like at the moment, it feels like a necessity. So therefore, like all those artists are struggling, probably especially the ones that are self-employees. It's hard for, you know, all those artists to keep up doing their work. And especially those ones that are the freelance that, you know, don't have any income. So I, I know like by first hand, like the Royal Opera House, they, there's gonna be some cuts um, in the payments, of course, because, um, you know, the, the next three or four months, um, we're gonna face a, a very uh, difficult time because people are not going to the theaters. So it's, it's, it's a tough, tough moment. But 
uh, and I think it's affecting everyone, not just the artists, but in this case, like the artists, we are really suffering. Absolutely. Um, you know, as I hear you say this, Fernando, I think about every time I went to a concert or a play or a musical and I took those times for granted. And now that we're in this surreal times, um, we are all desperate and hungry for every moment of joy that we can cling on yes. to. And art is such, such a crucial platform to deliver that. And what I'm hearing you say, Fernando, which leads to our other questions later in the interview is, this is impacting artists on multiple levels. Not only is there a severe financial impact to, financially, to artists yeah. as, as, as an industry, but there's also a really um, deep impact on your mental health as artists and, and, and creative people. That, that's what I'm hearing. Yes, yes, because, you know, like, we normally are in big groups, especially, you know, dancers, musicians, um, you know, art galleries. So we are surrounded by so many people day by day. And being, you know, by yourself, because, you know, this is my case right now. I live in London, but I'm, I couldn't even go to Colombia and I couldn't go to London. I have to stay here in LA. And at the moment, I'm, I'm alone. Um, I'm trying, I normally don't cook, so I'm trying to do all those things that I normally don't do. And, and it is hard because, um, you know, I have to keep my body fit. Uh, and, 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 you know, the conditions are not the, the most appealing for it. So mentally, it does make you stress, it makes you worry being outside of your house without your family or your friends or your inner circle. So um, uh, mentally, we have to probably try to make a new routine or like day by day, maybe just, you know, get up at breakfast, clean, do your workout, things like this, because otherwise we could become crazy. Absolutely, the importance of routine. And on the same line of advice, you know, I'd like to ask you the second question, which comes from Elliot from Madagascar. He asks, what would your advice be to performers, especially young performers who are currently self-isolating like yourself and may feel like they're unable to hone their craft? Because as you said, those conditions, those ideal conditions are just no longer uh, possible to recreate. Yeah, well, I, I believe like the most important thing is to you know, keep our instrument uh, moving. Like, you know, when I say instrument, I talk about myself that is my body, but then probably for a musician is, you know, to keep playing to their music and um, to a painter maybe it's a great moment to, you know, to portray some of the things that they are imagined will give them. And um, so, yeah, my m message is like strongly like keep, uh, working on your on your instrument and keep um, developing ideas. If you're a writer, write. Or even if you are not a writer, actually, because I tell you, believe it or not, I just finished to translate my book into English in this um, like three, four weeks and a half that, that that I've been. Because here in the US, we have to be until the 30th of April, apparently. Maybe they could extend it, but we don't know. So, so then keep being created and and keep training, you know, yourself in, in several ways. Absolutely, it's a great advice. Great advice to keep focusing on what you can control and keep honing your craft and being productive um, and not losing losing touch of, of your creative side. Um, on on similar lines, our next question. Um, comes from Edgar in Jamaica. I remember you mentioning how this is especially hitting freelancers really hard. Um, as an artist struggling to make a living as it is, what advice would you give Fernando to freelance performance to make it through a period where there really is little to no work? I believe like, well, probably my advice is use as much as you can your creativity because, well, now with the technology that we could, you know, reach out so many people. So maybe um, come out with some kind of idea or a concept that you could use through the technology and the media to maybe um, try to get some short works or private lessons or these kind of things probably could work for a little bit because I believe, and I think history also have told us this like this is a, a war we are at war but which actually is probably the first time that is with 
ourselves, like human to human, because the weapons is us in a way. Um, so, you know, through history, like the arts is always going to take a very important role in moments like this. So, of course, in this two or three months that we, we, we have ahead of us, we will be struggling. But after that, the arts or the artists will play a major, major role in all this chaos that we are living at the moment. So it will be a struggle at the beginning, but we will prevail and we will be able to um, take happiness uh, to, to the people that may lose their family or some members of their families after this. So keep your spirit up and yeah, just try to come with some kind of idea that could you know, keep you going um, day by day, um, especially using the technology because if we use it in the right way, we could probably get, get on with our life for a little bit until we get Fantastic. back to normal. Really great key messages, Fernando. You're exactly right. I think um, in a way, the silver lining of this crisis has been people are now being pushed to use technology to collaborate digitally and virtually even more. So that opens up opportunities to use our resources more effectively. And I love yeah. what you just said about um, don't lose sight of the role that art will play once we are on the other side of this war. Which yes. will be. And art will play yeah. such a critical role in telling the story of how we survived this crisis exactly. um, and hold on to joy. So fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. It was so touching. Uh, our next question comes from Ismail in Mali. Well, um, Ismail asks, many people turn to the arts as a form of escapism. How can performers continue to uplift people um, in these challenging times when venues are closed and live performances have been shut down? Yeah, well, you know, um, uh, as I told you earlier that I, I will try to do some like a Latin dance lessons, like a live stream so some people can join me. These kind of things I think are very genius, well, not genius, but it's great because, you know, you can reach so many people and make, you know, or give them some moments of pleasure in their day. Um, so... So I think all the artists, we actually should try to, you know, share a little bit more deep inside of our work um, with the rest of the world, because we all need it at the moment. It's, it's, I mean, we all need that. So, yeah. so I, I think, yeah, he, you know, you should try to also like do some lessons or concerts, but like, make a stream so then everyone could see it and, and enjoy it um, in their home. Absolutely. And you were talking about, you know, uh, the things that you've been doing on social media. I've started following you recently and I did see a really <laughs> funny chasing a martini video. And I <laughs> love that. And, you know, to my point earlier, I think there's a newfound appreciation for, for the arts and creative, whether it's comedy, whether it's dancing, yes. um, and, you know, anything to connect people virtually and, and provide that escape. Um, so, you know, as I was telling you earlier in the call, I use social media and I make funny videos myself. And there's okay. definitely a very strong appetite for comedy. People just need some way to cope and escape uh, from, from this madness that is going around us. Um, so thank yeah. you so much for sharing, sharing those tips. So I'll move on to my next question, Fernando, which is from Destiny, uh, who's in New Zealand. What a great name. So Destiny asks, live and pre-filmed shows from the theater to ballet are being broadcasted online um, as a response to the pandemic. Um, what do you think the COVID-19 long-term impacts will be on the entertainment industry? So if I could well, break I that question down a, a bit more, Fernando, sorry, is that do you think that the, the arts industry, the entertainment industry will bounce back as if nothing has changed or will there be permanent effects that, that will happen uh, post the pandemic? No, I believe like for everyone, like in every area of the world, it will change completely because um, this is something that no one was expecting to happen and it made everyone vulnerable. So we have to come with some kind of different way of approaching and deliver our um, arts. Um, so I believe, of course, like, we may don't see right away all these changes, or maybe we will, because again, it's so uncertain. But um, I believe like 
the the way of art is being presented now is going to be completely different maybe i don't know let's say four or five months in every area because even you know here in la hollywood and everything is like stopping on hold and um so so all those things they have to come the whole world will have to come up with a new idea of how we could deal with a crisis like this and make it work for everyone yeah great 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 answer fernando thank you so much for that and i think one so not to dismiss the 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 seriousness of whatever and the devastating effects of of what um every industry is going through through because of COVID, especially the arts and entertainment industry, but one tiny silver lining, I do see that it's made a lot of forms of performances like theater and ballet more accessible and, and approachable to a lot of us through social media. So myself, I probably couldn't go to the ballet as regularly as, exactly. I, as much as I like, but now I can see a live performance or a tutorial exactly. from Exactly. Fantastic. Um, so Pardon me, I'm going to um, sadly near the end of our uh, interview. Um, and so my last question to you would be from Daniel, who's based in Germany. Daniel asks, after the Great Depression of the 1930s, President Roosevelt launched a government-supported art project which employed 3,700 artists, which helped to kickstart the careers um, of Jackson Pollock and, and Mark, Mark Roscoe. How do you believe, Fernando, that governments should support artists in the wake of the COVID-19 today? They need, in a way, the arts to keep, you know, the spirit of the people lift up. Um, so I'm sure the government will definitely will invest in, in the arts. And, and I believe, like, you know, it will be very interesting to see when we think about that, the 1935, is it? Around 19... 1935, like yeah. when they create, yeah. Um, how we come up with something probably um, more updated of, of that um, uh, law that they create here in America. But um, I think the government should definitely, first of all, um, help those ones, um, you know, um, that are self-employed like freelance um, people, because they will be the ones that struggle the most at the beginning. And, and then of course, it will be very interesting how they will bring all these art to the people that have suffered the most, like probably the, the families or the areas where they lost more people, uh, members of their family, because they will be so sad that they, they need some kind of um, uplifted uh, moments. So I was thinking, you know, like what they do in Trafalgar Square, for example, in London, that they put, you know, those big screens, BP or all these companies. I think that's something that it will be very interesting if they could invest a little bit, taking the art to those places, more remote places that have struggled and, and um, have struggled the most and that need, you know, like this uh, uplift. Uh, great advice, Fernando. Thank you so much for your time today. You spoke with such honesty and vulnerability. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Um, and, I, and I sincerely hope that we all come out better and, and the arts and the entertainment industry are changed, but for, for the better um, post this pandemic. So please join me in giving Fernando a huge thank you for his time and make sure to like, comment and share this session. Thank you for watching and take care. It's a pleasure, pleasure to talk to you and yeah, all the best for everyone and keep faith and keep, you know, working on your bodies and in your instruments and, and develop new ideas. Great. Thank you, Fernando. Have a great day ahead. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.